Hello and welcome to the final unboxing of 2021. As the year comes to a close, I open a box. I don't know what that was. <laughs> anyway, I believe this is the December Art Snacks Plus box. So we're gonna dig inside and hopefully make something fun with the contents. All right, we're in. Let's find out what's inside. Ugh, bubble wrap baggies. Oh, we got a little sketchbook, it looks like. Can release it. The zigzag book. Oh, hey, I've done one of these before. I'll show you what they mean. Basically, it looks like a sketchbook on the outside, but when you open it, you get one really long, I guess, landscape <laughs> accordion style illustration. I did something with this once. Not this specific sketchbook, but I did like a scene that just transitioned into gradient from like summer to fall to spring. That was so long ago, but like, look how fun this is. But these are really cool. This is the Hanimul zigzag book. It's natural white watercolor paper folded into an accordion, suitable for all wet painting techniques. I wonder if they've included some watercolors. It's been a long time since I feel like I've done anything water-based, so that could be really fun. All right, we got the menus. Oh, this is kind of cute. I like how there's Skittles. Ooh, I just read something on the menu. So there's something that's exclusive to the Art Snacks Plus and it's Copic Multiliners. Oh, it's a set of black. I actually don't think I own any of these. This is a good box. <laughs> I say it's like liners. So we have a size 0 0.03, 0 0.05. That was always my go-to. 0.1 and then another 0.3. Oh, so there's two 0.3s. Oh no, this was 0 0.03. Oh, this is a dinker. Yeah, look at, oh, you could stab through the paper with that one. Oh, and it wasn't 0 0.5, it was 0 0.5. So these are a little smaller than I would usually go to for. So they're probably for making smaller illustrations or really fine details. What is this? Ah, let's get it out of its little cocoon. It's another accordion. So this is five centimeters by five centimeters or two inches by two inches. Oh, this is so fun. <laughs> Oh, we're definitely drawing in this. Let's find out what else we'll be using. Oh, hey, a Swedish fish. I feel like every time I open these, it's a dum dum pop. So that's an exciting change. Oh, and it's good till my birthday. Probably won't last that long. All right, here's the menu. I don't want to get spoiled again. So we're going to go right into the art supplies. It's a bit of a chonker. Okay, how am I supposed to use this in the tiny sketchbook? This is the Edding Permanent Acrylic, five to 10 millimeter, can be used on canvas or paper, and it's maximum opaqueness. This thing is huge. Ready? Using big markers and tiny sketchbooks. How fun. There's not really watercolors in here, but we do have these two, which are water-based, I believe. Yep, water-based Tombow pens, which you have the brush on one end, and I think a fine point. On the other, we have two different colors. One is this uh, lake water brown pond scum. <laughs> and then this one is a really pretty lilac. I'll have to swatch those two together. And we might be able to like grab a paintbrush and some water and do a little extra something. Here's the sticker. Oh, it's really cute. It's cute little polar bears on like a navy blue background with trees. All right, and then the final art supply, the Monotwin Tombow 0.8 millimeter and 0.4 millimeter double-ended marker. Oh, it's an oil-based marker. Interesting. I don't know what that means for a marker. Glides on real smooth. That's the thicker end. How's that for a blub dripping drawn inside of a box? I also want to just get this guy on here. Just got to prep it. Also release it from its cocoon. I'm supposed to put the cap on me, shake it in case it leaks. Oh, here it comes. <gasps> that is opaque. That's beautiful. Let's see if it goes over the line art. Oh, it does so beautifully. Opaque art supplies are always so fun to play with. Okay, I gotta wait for that to dry. I mean, while we're like drawing in here, give it a little tongue. Ew. <laughs> Just color in the tongue. We have the brown. Hmm, this is an interesting color combination. Looks pretty dry. I'm gonna go over that with this oil-based pen again. Clean up the edges. This pen layers really well over the Posca. What about the Copic ones? Let's do a thing. It looks still. It looks like the Copic actually dries, what would you call that? A deeper black than the oil-based pen. But this is also on cardboard. Let's move over to a little bit of paper. 
Oh, here. Found an empty page in the middle of my sketchbook. So you want to also like skip pages and then forget to come back. <laughs> anyway, what did I want to do? Oh, I wanted to see what these colors look like on white. These are water-based. So you don't really have to worry about them bleeding through like that. But because they're water-based, like as you layer them, it kind of, I don't really understand how it works, but it like eats away at the paper. Okay, that's way pinker than I expected. Hardly a purple. It's more of a pink. This makes me think of Neapolitan ice cream. Like if you uh, do a nice big scoop of chocolate, scoop of vanilla, and a scoop a strawberry. So you really don't want to like layer over the same spot too many times with water-based pen. But you can blend them out with water usually, which is cool. Here we go. There's my bowl of ice cream in a blue bowl. This blue is so rich compared to the two water-based pens. And we also have this thing, which is oil-based. And again, I'm not entirely sure what that means. Oh yeah, that looks way richer than it did in the brown. What about the Copics? Do they look as black? Oh my gosh, look how tiny that is. That's the uh, 0.03. This is the 0.3. Should be like 10 times as thick, right? And then we have the 0.05, which goes in between those two. And then the 0.1. Oh, so today I guess I'm going to be using teeny tiny line art. Oh, and then we have the other side of this too, the thin side. So we have a good range. And we have these, which I'm not, I gotta say, I'm not really a big fan of the color scheme. Although I did come up with something. <laughs> what do we do in this really long sketchbook? The first idea, let me just like draw a really long thumbnail, which would be like this outstretched, right? So you have to divide that into eight. Okay, it's no longer squares, <laughs> but we do have eight segments. Could we use this for, why don't we wait for this to dry there and we'll try, well, I could just make a new square. We'll wait for that to dry and then we'll test these two on it and see if you even see them at all, because we'll need to know that. We also have the Swedish fish, which is a fish, and I drew a blowfish, which is also a fish. So I don't know if I should be uh, leaning towards fish, but we have that option. Just draw another one. I want to redeem myself. I wasn't happy with the last blub. All right, the oil-based pen <laughs> leaks through the page. FYI, if I cut this in half, then I'll have squares and I'll have two separate ones I can sort of uh, vibe with. I'm just going to ponder things for a minute and doodle. Just doodling CC. I don't know if you can even see see her. <laughs> she was uh, based off a of candy cane. I have a whole video on it actually. <laughs> anyway, we are here. We have a job to do. And yeah, let's try and layer this. Well, it's not turning the marker blue. Also can't really see it because it's so transparent. Oh, you can see the brown. That's cool. You can probably use that for shading if we end up with anything that uses the solid blue, which we probably will. Those kind of are only three options here. I just feel like this isn't... Um, I don't like the color scheme. I'm just gonna put it out there. If What if we do a majority pink and blue and then brown is like a small accent color? Like what happens if we layer this on top of the pink? kind of works. Basically we need 10 little mini illustrations. Do I want it to like carry over? So like if you look at it like this, there's a complete illustration and a complete illustration, but they like blend together. I'm gonna draw a square that's the exact same kind of dimensions here. Little tiny fishies. Maybe a little middle size one here. We could also go with like a whale. Why don't we just do a big water scene with different blub animals? Blub sea life. I'm gonna need references. Okay, sea animals. So maybe the first one will be fish. And we'll transition into like some kind of, I don't know, I'm thinking dolphins maybe? Whales, like big whales. <laughs> then I'm thinking killer whales can have their own because they're really pretty. Then maybe from there, like what if we do sea turtles? Or should we go like deeper into the ocean? So it's like not horizontal, it's vertical. So you go deeper into the ocean. So then we should probably put dolphins at the top, maybe sea turtles. Fish could really go anywhere. We could do like squid, or we can have like an angler fish. Just write them down. Gotta change this up. Should dolphins go at the top? Dolphin or sea turtles? I guess it doesn't really matter. I wanna start with sea turtles though because they're kind of gonna be interesting to draw. Then we'll do dolphins. Then should we do fish? Just generic fish. Then maybe octopi. Whales. I do want those like like deep fish down here. We can also have coral. So like I'll write angler just to, can I smell and coral? Well, coral needs sun, doesn't it? But like, you know, bottom of the seafloor stuff. Maybe I'll put shark above whale. Whales, squid? Or is squid just go into the octo? We can also have like things that go between them. But, like this will be our main groups. Ooh, 
we've got a plan. I think I might just start sketching in here since it's, it's gonna take us a while. Did I do that? I was gonna do the eight or do I wanna do the nine? Uh, wait, there's 10 here. Why did I say nine? How on earth would that add up to nine? Oh my gosh. I think I wanna go with the open because then it's like, I feel like that's the better way to go. It's going to take uh, two tenths as long. Is that correct? <laughs> but I do wanna start with sea turtles. So I start with the top of the water. So we have like the surface of the ocean with bubbles and foam and froth maybe even a boat so you can see like how big something is it can have like a little propeller you're gonna have to look up references clearly <laughs> i just kind of want to sketch everything out so i like know the plan you know <laughs> i feel like that's the first step then we'll find references oh, little sea turtles and of course they're blubby maybe a closer one so the head will be a little bigger you can make it out you can kind of transition to the next one maybe another little dinky one actually maybe we'll put this one just a fish just a little fish all right so from sea turtles i wanted to move the dolphins I feel like one would fit really well here with the like flat tails the like noses Ooh, do we want to do blub eyes or dot eyes dot eyes are always fun too Need one like turning, I feel like. Oh, they definitely have a fin, don't they? Why does that look weird? Why does a dolphin look like Google? Yeah, they have a fin. I don't really like the layout there. I feel like we need, I don't know, maybe some bubbles. All right, so then the next one, I should keep it open so I can see. Kind of liked how that transitioned. This one feels like it needs something here, which our next one was fish. So we can just put a nice big prominent blubfish probably. There you go. I also feel like we need stuff like hanging off the edges. I want it to look like it's, you know, coming outside. Like we have the boat so far, the only thing kind of coming off the edge. And since dolphins are like friendly things, let's just add another dolphin here maybe. Maybe another one here, like they're just swimming by. Maybe lots of bubbles here if they're like whoosh, swimming. Swimming. All right, continuing our way down to the ocean. This is supposed to be the fish square. And there's all sorts of different kinds of fish. What about that like sunfish? It looks like this. Oh, I don't, I don't like that at all. What about some of those fish from Finding Nemo? I'm thinking the one, uh, this long thing on the top. Stripes. Something tuna shaped. Some could probably be like silhouettes. And then of course we need bubbles. So since these fish are closer to us, we'll have bigger bubbles too. Whereas the dolphins are kind of far away. We have sort of smaller bubbles. I don't know. Would that help? You need to think of some more fishies. Maybe some clownfish. What does a clownfish look like? We can have a Swedish fish. Oh wait, that's like copying that exact look. Change the direction. Maybe a little like current of bubbles could be fun. And then we'll do octopi. Nice big one. Maybe you can take up the whole thing with all his legs. Six, seven, and the eighth could be back here somewhere. <laughs> and we'll add like little suction-y bits too. I feel like their heads are actually down here. Oh, and their mouths are technically down here. Hmm. Just give them eyeballs. <laughs> Ooh, look at the variety. I feel like it's looking really good. All right, next up, let's just move into small sharks. Maybe swimming upwards. Doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. I have drawn sharks a lot, so this really shouldn't come too difficult. Oh, well, you know, we didn't have any bubbles around here. A little great white chasing a little guy. Maybe a different kind of shark here. Oh, that's what's wrong. I gave him a dolphin tail. I'm like, why do he look silly? All right, next up after sharks. I don't really like the layout of that, actually. Maybe if he's coming, like, towards us. With angry eyes. Still kind of takes up the same amount of space, so it doesn't really fix the problem I had. Maybe if I just move him over. I really like him, but he's moving over. Alright, next up we have whales. Whales, whales, whales. So I think I might just take up a huge space with this. <laughs> might look up a little reference quickly because if it doesn't, if it's not shaped anything like that, then I probably should change it. I feel like you could tell it's a whale, but I think I can do better. I get it a little bit more whale shaped. Some bubbles. Okay. I'm really happy with this little whale. Should I put a big whale back here? Just so I can draw the shape. Oh, crap, I still don't have room. Whales are big! So then these bubbles will be tiny little dots. There, whales takes up two, as I feel like they deserve. All right, that brings us down to squid now. I'm gonna make a big swishy so I can get something fun. Nah, 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 nah. I have one swishing this way. And this way. Squid are weird, man. Oh, their eyes in a different spot. Their eyes like in here. 
And then they do have two really long tentac whatevers. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Maybe this is a bad idea. I'm drawing this one. I guess they move this way, right? Yeah, we have a bunch of squid. Kind of wish I'd done fewer of them. I could fill one of these spaces in with an eel. I don't know. All right, we're at the bottom. We gotta have the actual ground. Maybe with a little rocks. I don't think there'd be any seaweed this deep. But I want an angler fish. I feel like it has a big head at the top with the like thingy. <laughs> okay, I need a reference. Okay, it has more chin. I also wouldn't mind moving it someplace else, to be honest. Maybe slightly off to the right here. And it's got little fins like this. And that's where the little light bulb comes from. <laughs> but I liked the mouth before, so we'll probably copy my earlier mouth. So we can also include some other weird little bottom of the ocean fish. Apparently the giant red shrimp is all the way at the bottom. I'm gonna add that in. Ew. Oh, I don't like this. Hey! All right, so that's our first pass. All 10 little cubes have something drawn in them, so that's an accomplishment. I just like seeing the little sketches in there. This makes this more fun! All right, what did I say the next step was? I got distracted. Line art. Oh, and references. Not a fan of the way the boat looks. I also might turn the boat. It's a good thing to uh, fix. Some kind of engine. <laughs> I don't like that any better. And you have one of these little birdies. I feel like I'm ready to do line art on that little guy, so I might just do that so that everything else falls secondary. <laughs> Which line art should we use? Because what I want to do, since the colors are kind of um, less than ideal, we'll say, I'd really like it to be heavy on the line art. And what I mean by that is I really want there to be a decent amount of like detail and line variation. Let's start with the second to smallest. Some outline our little guy. Got a little tongue. And the shell. I really should have looked up a reference. What am I doing? Here we go. We have a little turtle, turtle. I'm gonna look up a reference before I do the second turtle, though. <laughs> right, I'm looking at a sea turtle. They have little noses. <laughs> Ooh, I like him much better. Now this guy, though, I think he's gonna need a little bit of a new sketch. So they're basically their faces are a little flatter than I drew them. And they've got an eyeball and like a beak almost. And their nostrils are up here. And I also want him to look like he's smiling. So we're gonna have to take some creative liberties. And that shell kind of looks more like that. Slightly erase. All right, I'm gonna use the same liner to use for that one. So the second to smallest. Yeah, and go over all these lines. I never know when to switch sizes, and uh, today is no different. Then add little extra details. It looks like a turtle to me. I think I can safely draw in those little birds. I feel like they're a low commitment. <laughs> and then the sea foam. I liked the curvature of this. And then, I don't know, follow along but slightly different. And then add bubbles. Now that there's no boat there, I feel like I could fit another turtle. If I do a boat, I need a reference. I'm just not feeling it anymore. Also, I think I will be able to add it in later if I do think it needs it after I add the sea foam. So we'll do that first. I'm gonna use the next step to the very top. So it has like, I don't know, it's more an obvious line. Then I'm gonna go back down one size and do the other line. And probably all the bubbles of this. Am I gonna be able to do like a second line here? Okay, then there's some kind of fish here. I might try and turn him into another turtle. I'm gonna texture on the. Hey! I think that looks like another turtle. I think I said I was gonna add the bubbles last. Oops. All right, that's sea turtle square. Now let's move on to the dolphins. I feel like the dolphins, when I look at it, is kind of my least favorite, like the layout. So maybe we can solve that. I don't mind the swimming by thing, but I think it's just that you see tail, head, and one full body. Maybe if you saw like one full and then most of one and just a smidge of another. See how that might just be more pleasing. <laughs> Basically, I'm gonna shrink the dolphin and think of it in this motion. So I want one here, and then there'll be another one there, and then one almost full. Give them those little noses. And then there'd be like lots of bubbles following that shape, I think. Probably add another one up here, playing along. Yeah, I think I like that better already. Now we can just add some liner. Uh, I'll do the second to smallest again. Doesn't look ideal. What did I do wrong so that I do the next one better? <laughs> I feel like it's that back fin that looks wrong. It's actually way more like flat, but I feel like it's too late to fix that. Let's try to get it right on this next one. 
All right, this vent is supposed to go out, out, and then it's like much closer together. Ah, it doesn't quite look like it either. Go ahead and erase, see what we're left with. I feel like the dolphin I could almost color in with solid line art. You know, maybe at least one of them, maybe like this one. I think what it needs maybe is just a tiny dolphin way in the distance and we can shade that one in. Then I can use a much thicker line art if I want to color in the whole dolphin. Maybe another one. Ooh, this one's upside down. Can they even do that? <laughs> Now, do I want to move this blob? I just feel like I don't like that he's on the edge. It's not something I have in the rest of the drawing. I could just bring him down here. Just make him a little smaller. I like that better already. But yeah, I need to look up that turtle. Head. Or turtle fish. But you know, Gil from Finding Nemo. I think what I did wrong is this should be connected to the front. And his little fins here. Okay. I feel like I can do the line art for this one. Now, this is one where I might be able to use one of the thicker pens. And then the end of the fin's also dark. Let's go to the thickest one. Oh wait, that was the thickest one. Oh. <laughs> and fill in all the black. I love having some like solid black on here. The rest of it needs it. Like look how bland this looks in comparison. And we're gonna color in another one of these in the background. I'm trying to add like that variation. All right, blub. Probably should go down a size. Oh, and this little guy. <laughs> That's three squares. Okay, we're getting there. Oh, this was supposed to be a clownfish, so let me look up a reference of that. They have a lot more fins than I realized. Let me sketch him in then. That's like two fins on the top and two fins on the bottom. And then this thing. There you go. Add that line art in. Make it a little thicker around here. Clownfish. Another fish. What about one of those ones that's more like pointy in the front? Uh, I'm really simplifying that one. <laughs> Another fish. Another fish. This is the point one. It's a different fish. I don't know what kind of fish this is. Here's another fish. <laughs> Being a little bit more creative with it, I guess. All right, next up is this bubbly thing, which I kind of want to follow the same technique I did up there. Looking good. I'm gonna lightly erase the Octopi here. Do you want to make them a little more realistic? Okay, and slightly erase that. I'm thinking probably just use this guy again because he's been very helpful. And I can always make it thicker, but you can't make it thinner. There you go. He's like waving at us. Now I definitely want to go to the next size up. And kind of fill this in to make them stand out. Ooh, that's too thick for bubbles. Trying to make them look random. All right. Do I want to change the layout of the shark at all? I'm, I like the way that little shark looks. I think he's cute. Could probably move him down more. Let's try it. I don't know what I did wrong, but I don't like this. Where do we want to put the other shark? I'm just kind of poking off here. A couple great whites hanging out. This one's not happy. Oh, that's why he's happy. He's about to get this little fish. All right, line art. He's gonna be a happy shark too. No sad sharks allowed. Sorry. What if I use one of the smaller ones to color in the shark? That way it'll look a little gray if I do like a hatching. Okay, so then this all gets colored in. So I'm using one of the really thin ones. This is kind of what I had in mind when I said heavy on the line art. I wanted it to have like a bunch of different textures. Okay, I like that so much I'm gonna do this one too. All right, all right, the whale, I've been waiting for this. I don't think I need to do any sketching on this one. I just need to lightly erase him. All right, we'll use this one. Do it on mouth. Beautiful. We have another whale in the distance there. This whales wouldn't really be this low because don't they have to come up for air or maybe they just don't need to breathe that much so it's okay. Ah! Look how much is done! <gasps> All right, now these dumb squids. Erasing. Let's sketch again. Looking at a reference and see if I can do a little better. Basically they have this like peanut and then it's got like triangles off of that. And lots of dots all over it. And then there are eyeballs right here. All right, then there's lots of tentacle things. How many? I think it's like six. Okay, this thing has way more than six. Wow. It has two eyes, a beak, eight arms, two feeding tentacles, and a funnel. Eight of these. Probably won't see them all because they're a little thicker. Get at least five showing maybe. I think I'm willing to add line art to this. Let's use second to smallest. And then all these guys. 
are actually tentacles. There you go. That'll do it. Oh, I need to sketch another squid. Try this again. One, three, four, seven, eight, nine, and maybe we'll just have a bunch of legs with one feeding tentacle there and a bunch of legs. Just so you get the idea that there's more. Right, let's try these guys. Start with the feeding tentacle and a bunch of little legs. Do the same thing up there. Ta-da! That's the squid square. Last square. I feel like I need to look up references for these guys too. <laughs> Deep sea fish. Oh, we could add a starfish at the bottom. I feel like that's a good idea. And whatever that thing was. I actually really like that. I'm just gonna trace it as is. Starfish and some rocks. And find an anglerfish one more time. I feel like I want to draw them a lot smaller than this. I'm so confused by this fish, but I think that'll work. Jesus. Lots of little sharp teeth. Have a little light. Probably had another something ugly down here. Is that it? Did I just finish this? So basically, here's my predicament. I feel like my options are either leave everything white and just use like pink as a little accent color throughout, okay? Or don't use those colors and fill in all of the ocean with the blue. Let me see how well I could color this in without getting inside all of the other shapes. Might as well give it its fair shot, see what it looks like. Okay, it's kind of cool. I can also like look over and see if I can sort of add any more hatching to anything to add depth. Just to kind of add variety throughout. Okay, looks even better now. I think I'm gonna try and add the pink. Let's do the ones I know I want to and then maybe try and evenly distribute it from there. So I was thinking this squid right here. Oh, oh, I'm doing it. Now since this is really good paper, I can probably layer it multiple times. Okay, and then one of these guys, maybe this crustacean, maybe the starfish, maybe this thing. So that's our distribution so far. Based on this, the whale needs to be pink. I'm not sure I'm ready for that. Maybe we'll just do pink clownfish. And then we'll have a pink dolphin. And this guy, I guess. So there we've kind of distributed the pink. If we do brown, I want it on the floor of the ocean. Ugh, see, I don't like these next to each other. But I gotta commit now. I also wanna color this little guy pink. We could color the sky pink. So it's like a sunset and give it some clouds. All right, not adding any more brown. Not unless I dilute it. Honestly, I'm tempted to dilute the pink and like fill in the background. But then it's not really gonna look like the ocean, it's just gonna look pink. So satisfying. What if I filled in this with the dark blue and then slowly added water as it got to the top? Let me test adding water to this acrylic pen. So let's use this as a little palette. Grab some of this water and some of this and see what that looks like. So basically I'm gonna have to really figure out how much water to add for any incremental square. So it'd be solid this. Oh, you can't see. <laughs> I filled in that one with it. Then we need to add just a little bit of water. So glob a bunch on there. Dab of water, pick that up. Oh, I should have started on the other side. I think it's changing too quickly. Well, if I actually like kind of blend it upwards, then it will be a gradient moving along. I feel like if I did this on something that wouldn't absorb it, we might have a better luck. Can I do it on my <laughs> palette? Just glob a bunch this paint on here and we'll try this again then we'd add more water to this mixture and then go up from there <laughs> and move upwards okay so that's probably the technique we will go for all right so basically you need to go in and fill in this little square dibs a little big oh my gosh i'm doing it i'm doing it you know what? i could probably switch to this i got to blend it out a little Trying not to blend it out with water though. Oh dear, this is such a big nib. I think I'm gonna end up going over this with the white paws. Gotta add more bubbles. I decided it doesn't seem worth it to go around the bubbles because they don't even look that good because they're like such a weird shape. All right, so that's the bottom. Next, we need to start the gradient. So essentially, I think I'll do dry this out and we'll just add a bunch of this in here. I'm gonna add just a little bit of water in there. And we'll start blending up from there. Now that this is going to be a little more transparent, we do have to watch out for the bubbles, I think. To this top square. Top of the square, excuse me. So many little spaces to get around. Hey, we finished another square. Let's add another square to water. We'll see how this goes. Going up to the next square. Kind of following that same idea. All right, let's square number three. Should do the same trick. A little squirt of water, blend it out, and move on to the next square, which isn't gonna be much, because the whale's taking up most of it. Woohoo! 
It's working. It looks so much lighter. In our squirt of water, I think I'm gonna have to be even more cautious with it. Oh, it's getting so light. I hope it still looks blue by the time we get to the top. It's looking good. All right, and a little more water. Dry it up here. Make it a little darker around the outside edge of that. I feel like I have to add more and more water because I'm not noticing so much of a difference. Go around the clownfish. Nice and mixed. Uh oh, you might've gone too light. Spreading it out. All right, now for this one, I'll try stabbing it first. I'm gonna actually just not dab it at the top so it's a little deeper of a color. And then we can blend that out by dabbing off the extra moisture as we go lower. I add like a little blue, the outside edge for the sunset. Okay, here's what we've got. I'm gonna wait for it to dry and then add a little Posca bubbles. All right, it's pretty much dry now. So we can definitely finish down here and add in some new bubbles. Too many, it's kind of starting to look like stars. So I could just pick the ones I've already drawn. They looked fine. And then I want lots of white in here. But what I kind of want to do up there is just add an extra layer for some blue texture. So I'm gonna grab the paintbrush again with this. Just kind of add in some, I don't know, depth. I'll find the flow of the ocean with it. And is there anything else I want to do? Just sign it down here. Hey, I got to sign 2021 one more time. That's it. There, we're at the bottom. And then as it goes up, the blue gets lighter and lighter and lighter as it gets to the top. And you have the sea turtles, which I really like. And the whale's my favorite, which is your favorite. I'm really glad I added the blue. I was so nervous about it, but I think it ended up being a really good decision. And I feel like it just makes all of the design fit together better. And ah, look at it. You can really see the gradient when I close it up. How cool is that? I'm happy with this. I'm singing, clearly I am. Yeah, I do want to thank you guys for watching and coming along with me as I <laughs> filled this teeny tiny accordion sketchbook. If you're interested in finding out more about art snacks, I will have a link in the description. And yeah, I hope you all have a delicious evening full of waffles and I'll see you next year. Bye.